Oh, you are welcome. It's the second uh, presentation, video presentation on the practical digital marketing training, mentorship and support for CEOs, marketing managers and sales executives. Like I promised, the training is going to be in series. The videos, the first one, uh, three sessions are actually going to be kind of a foundation and then begin to build a practical on them. If you remember in the first, in our first uh, class, we tried to talk about the 10 factors to always consider. We, and we talk about that we, we, we discuss it that to enjoy consistent, robust return on investment, we must plan our marketing strategically in line or as rich disruption to the 10 key factors that control sales. Remember, we discuss the 10 key factors that control sales. What I want us to do, because we are having a, a kind of assignment from this video, you will need to watch the first video again is this uh, three first three, three videos are critical to really help the practical sessions. So uh, we discuss about the 10 factors that affect sales and uh, what we need to do that for us to enjoy returns on investment, we will all need to find a way to bring the 10 factors in either by the way to strategically in line or, or, or work with them or find a rich disruption against them. And thank God for digital marketing. Digital marketing actually helps for lots of uh, disruption of these uh, foundational factors because they are serious, they are serious foundational factors that we need to consider. Uh, these factors, you remember, uh, needs. We talk about uh, needs, it's a factor. When there is a need, of course, uh, we control sales. We talk about uh, location. Uh, location will criminally affect sales. But uh, the own disruption that has helped that to solve the uh, issue of location is uh, digital marketing. And then we we'll, we'll talk about product name. The name matters. The product name, the branding name, names matter a lot. So, and uh, we, do you remember we talk about influence. You, know, you see, if it's uh, someone you respect that's, take, that's using something, you you are like you accept that product. If you do, even if you detest a product before, you now go to a place of someone you respect your your model. Uh, and uh, you discover that your model is using or the leader is using that product, it's going to change your perspective about that product. So influence, it's, and that's why you see, that's why influencer, that's why some products have to use celebrity, the fine use influencer, the, uh, those that are the idols, the models, those that control some, uh, or some sectors or some groups or some of or, or some of the community, the, the, those that control them, those that have influence on them, they use them to promote the, the product because uh, when a celebrity is holding a product and confirms that it's using that product, there is possibility of so many people that accept that celebrity or that personality to want to, I mean, uh, follow suit in using or consuming that product. So influence has its own thing. We talk about season, the product that seasonal because of season and the season we always need. It's not product when we only say seasonal products. It's not that the product actually seasonal. It's because that the season demands product because when the season, the season comes, that we have needs for some product or some things. So because that season has come, or for example now in January, February, March, you will not be doing lightning uh, and then doing. Uh, 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 all this day, uh, uh, like the uh, decoration, like uh, decoration, but in Christ, uh, when it comes to Christmas now, because it's Christmas season, now the demand for 
decoration comes in. So that's the way it is that uh, season controls our uh, sales. And then interest. We talk about interest. You may have interest for something that may not have interest for it. The interest control sales, and the higher the interest, the higher the demand of, of for product. So um, we talk about culture. That there are products that are not allowed in some culture. We talk, we talk about uh, culture and we talk about disruption. There are times that a product is not allowed in the, in the, in the culture, not because they don't want it, but because perhaps it has not been introduced to them. We talk about the Nike two guys for a shoe company that the same two guys, one got that they were not using shoe, so it's referred that, that there's no business there. But the other one said, wow, this is a opportunity for us. These people don't know shoe, let's introduce shoe to them and we make the money out of us. That worked. And that's that is destruction in a way. I introduced the and introduce you to them and uh, uh, the uh, the rest is story. So and then we also talk about opinion. People's opinion about product matters sometimes uh, it's going to determine the sales or the uh, it's very key to that's why we must be careful when you're on, on, on social media. Good portrait, attitude, uh, good uh, res moral response, and the valuing people will always be a boost to a people who don't have wrong opinion about you, about your product. So, and then trending. Whatever that is trending is most, most the most time in this time is of course born to sell. So trending is under one. And then the behavior. Remember we talk about behavior and uh, we talk about uh, there are things that adults consume, there are things that youth consume. They are, I mean, they have, they have different interests, they have different behavior. There's where you can find younger ones. There's where you can, where you can find adults. So all this were aware. So what we what, what I said is going to be an assignment is that we have value proposition, we have mission statement, ambition statement. I know some of us we already have our mission statement. We have the, all this, but now what we want to do as assignment is that for the next three days we're going to sit down, we're going to sit down and consider these ten, these ten uh, 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 foundational factors that affect sales. And you look at your value proposition. Your mission statement, your vision statement. If you have, if you have them, if you don't have them, you're going to consider. Like for if you have them already, you're going to look at them and they're explaining the value proposition and compare. How does your value proposition, your mission statement, and your vision go in line with the ten factors that control sales? And if not in line, how do you come up with strategic? Uh, plans that will disrupt, that will strongly disrupt uh, the factors we talked about. So, you, uh, and and, and uh, the the concept is what is we are going to build upon. So, what we are trying to do, what the idea of our of data of our training is to be able to use lead to get more so that you don't just put, put run and hard and just run and hard uh, anyhow you have a plan hard and you find every way to get results so this is very important look at the value proposition look at the, the mission statement and the vision statement consider how all this can how they go in line Take the factors one after the other. How do my value proposition, how do my vision, how do my vision or my mission statement, how, was it, how does it go with needs, a factor of needs, factor of location, uh, product name, and things like that. So when you consider that to your, with your business, then you begin now look at it. For those that are not in line, how will how do I make them? How do I come up with a, 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 a concept of disruption? A concept of disruption that will make my value proposition, my mission statement, and vision statement accept one thing, because it has to be understood and accepted everywhere. This is this is very important. So I'm going to 
spend time three days, look at it, and then another thing is that make this value value proposition your mission statement, vision statement as they go in line or disrupt these factors, make them straightforward and clear. In this report, okay, we will be building the organic, we'll be doing building our, our building our organic arts and the paid arts around that. That's that's for us to get results. So we build around that, we will to get results. And uh, so I will now come back after you have done that. Uh, the next we have that we'll be going to is art golden secret for robust ROI. There are golden secret that are mistakes some people people too many people make when they do when they are running hearts or about internet or about digital marketing. So uh, the, the next video which is going to be the third video is going to talk about the it's going to show us about the arts golden secret for robust ROI. Uh, don't forget like I said uh, it's a uh, step-by-step stop. Now, uh, I make sure that we we'll, we'll speed up now with the videos. I make sure that we we'll speed up with the videos and then with the practicals. The, I, I, of course, I know that some people will actually need, uh, uh, that's why we come up with the idea of management, uh, onboarding management, training, and uh, uh, support. Because I know it's not all the small business or CEOs or all the small businesses that can be able to practically and fully run the social platforms. I understand that. But the thing is that even if you are not going to be the, if we are not going to run it, even if we are still going to manage it for you, the bottom line is that you need to understand, you need to understand uh, the digital marketing, the concept of digital marketing and how it works. So when you are, if you are, you are paying for services, you'll be able to know that, okay, it's your, my services getting results or not. You'll be able to know where your, your money is going to I'll be, able, be able to measure if you are uh, getting returns as regard the investment. So this that's the reason why uh, taking time to watch the, the videos uh, is very, very important. Taking time to follow us step by step, even as we unleash this uh, di the practical data marketing training. So I'll be stopping our I will while well, I'll be taking us the next session by Art's Golden Secret for Robust as Rad Or well, remember your uh, value proposition, your mission statement, your vision statement, use put them side by side with the 10 factors, the foundational factors of, of, of uh, the control sales and see the, how they go in line or how you can destroy. It's all about, this is all about innovation and a, a strat, a strategy. So uh, I've, I've, I've come, been able to come up with so many things that uh, they're not in the normal way that people do things but I, I, I we need innovation is key in this in this generation so you have to sit down within the, these three days compare and look at it and then make if you don't have a value proposition uh, vision statement before mission statement this is opportunity for you to develop one and then when we come back we'll be able to go into more details more making uh, data marketing more clearer and then we get into other things and we're going to practical. So thank you. Please try to do the assignment. And uh, when you have you have it, so when I start on the next uh, Arts Golden Secret for Robust ROI, you begin to see where uh, how to match them because you begin to match, you are going to have plans. So the plan is that even when you are going to run your heart, the things you need to consider you need to know things that you need to consider the the process how to get it done so i'll be stopping here now for today and then we'll continue soon but please the next three days try to think around your value proposition uh, your mission statement and your vision statement so thanks so much is the second video we will be getting uh, the third video Probably working on it, which will be out. I want us to take it one step after the other. Thank you.